Hi everyone! On August 13 and 14, 2022, in Baden-Baden, Germany, a very interesting World Chess Tennis Championship took place. This uh, quite an unusual event uh, took place already for the 11th time in a row, thanks to the main organizer's uh, great efforts, Yaroslav Srakowski, he's doing a uh, quite a uh, job to invite all the players once a year to play chess and tennis. Well, my whole family took part, my husband, my daughter and myself included. Unfortunately for myself, despite my great efforts, well, I tried, I tried very hard to play like this and like that and even like this. But it didn't quite work out. I won only one um, match out of seven in tennis and wasn't able to qualify. The format of the event in the first day, the tennis day, seven tie-break matches are played to 10 points. In the second day, in the morning of the second day, seven rounds of chess uh, played using the Swiss tournament and top four players combined they qualify with the results, with the best results combined. They qualify to play the semi-final, uh, two semi-finals and then the final match in the afternoon of the second day. These, these are the best um, players of Baden-Baden uh, 2022. The players that are highlighted in white scored the most points in two disciplines and thus they qualified for the final matches in the semi-final and in final players actually play chess and tennis um, on two courts tennis courts so they first uh, start by playing either chess or tennis and they alternate between those disciplines six points in tennis six minutes in chess the time control in chess is 15 0 no increment uh, if the uh, game is drawn in chess then the match should be ended in tennis and the first player either to score 18 points in the tennis discipline or to win uh, this uh, game of chess wins the match and with that in mind Let's have a look at what happened in the final match between Grandmaster Pavel Trigubov and Ricardo Schut from Brazil. They both won their uh, semi-final matches and let's have a look at their final encounter. Here we go. Ricardo is a very experienced uh, tennis player. He's uh, quite a strong uh, chess player, about uh, 2300 rated, uh, and he's played many, many uh, such events, uh, many finals. And as you can see, uh, Pavel and Ricardo, they started with um, the tennis part, which, which first six points went very well for Pavel, since he managed uh, to take a lead. He was leading after the first tennis part 4-2, to two, which is uh, of course great, um, because again Ricardo is quite an experienced uh, tennis player. And now we're switching to the chess game, we see that the French defense, the exchange variation happened. Actually, in the semi-final, Pavel played e5, here he played uh, e takes d5, the exchange French, bishop d3, and here Ricardo played bishop g4, which seems to be quite inaccurate. Knight b4 or bishop d6 are much better options for black, since after bishop g4, white is in time to protect the central pawn, and uh, black opted for a very sharp and double-edged plan with long side castling, which cannot really be recommended, because after a long side castle here for white it's quite easy to attack on the queen side. That's exactly what Pavel is doing. He pushes uh, his uh, b-pawn b4, preparing for b5, f6. Ricardo is trying to protect this e5 square, but unfortunately this pawn on f6 is uh, not letting 
uh, its own knight, black knight from g8 to develop, knight b to d2, Pavel continues to develop, king to b8, knight b3, getting ready to jump on c5 in case of knight e7. And here Ricardo makes a very bad move, b6. Usually we say that uh, if you're under attack, you should not move your pawns in front of your king since it gives uh, your opponent an easier task to undermine and to open up to break through after b6 yes pavel played a4 and the position is already quite tough for black you can see the val bar that is indicates as that indicates the evaluation it's plus two so the computer already gives an advantage of two pawns of course, it doesn't mean that uh, white has a material advantage, but rather his attack, which is so strong, uh, will force black in the near future to give up uh, this such material to sacrifice a piece or a few pawns uh, in order to um, stop this attack. And even then, it's not so clear whether it's going to be possible. Knight g2 e7, finally developing the king side knight. But again, white's attack is too far advanced. It's so easy, uh, generally, usually easy if you manage to open up the a file or the h file if the attack is on the king side to get through to approach the opponent's king b5 and suddenly one more problem the knight on c6 is almost trapped there is no way to go all squares are under control and well finally ricardo will end up uh, going to a5 thus giving up a pawn and the attack is not over after this sacrifice. Yes, it's needed to sacrifice the knight. Well, not the knight, but the pawn in this case. But again, uh, it's quite easy to say that the game didn't go black's way. And it was mostly because of the wrong plan chosen by Ricardo at the start of the game. So the openings opening stage is quite important in chess here uh, is a very interesting uh, moment that pavel did not take on a5 immediately because he made a prophylactical move this pawn on a5 will it's it's not possible to save this pawn it's not going to be possible but if to take it immediately, then bishop takes f3 and queen c7 with bishop takes h2 ideas might happen. So that's why Pavel first uh, played h3. He first attacked the bishop and he got he got this pawn out of uh, the attack. He put it on the he put it on the protected square and after bishop f5, he grabbed the pawn on a5. And we see that the val bar is getting higher and higher. Now it indicates a white's advantage as much as plus, uh, almost plus four pawns. So in other words, uh, we call such positions usually winning for one side. Bishop b6. Here, bishop f4 could have been uh, a good option, but Pavel picked another plan. He played bishop a3, heading with uh, his uh, bishop to c5. But that's gonna happen after the second part of tennis that the players will play. So six more points, 4-2 for Pavel for the moment. He is leading the match in chess, as we saw, and in tennis. 
But after the second uh, segment of tennis, uh, the score improved significantly for Ricardo. He managed to even the score in tennis. But alas, it's not so easy for chess to even the position. So 6-6. Six, six. After the second tennis segment, the score was 6-6 six, six in tennis and the players went back to play chess. Six more minutes of chess. So we left the board after knight c8. Here Pavel captured on f5. Queen takes f5. And he put his bishop on c5, putting some pressure on the bishop on b6. And the problem for black is that uh, his knight on c8 needs to protect both the bishop on b6 and the pawn on a7. Just too many tasks to do. And he cannot leave a c8 square. And that's exactly what Pavel is trying to highlight. He is bringing his knight via e1 to d3 b4 and then finally to c6 and who is going to protect the square it's not so clear well ricardo tries to create some kind of counter-attack on the king side but unfortunately it's just his way behind in getting this counterplay g4 h4 of course it's a very important move to close the h file not to open it. Of course, taking on g4 would have been a huge mistake. h4, on the other hand, just completely shuts out black's uh, attempt to create a counterattack on the king side. And after rook h2, e8, knight went to b4, and now the knight is looking to jump to c6 and again it's just not possible to protect the square because the knight cannot do everything i mean if it gets to e7 then the bishop on b6 will be in trouble and other than that there is no way to stop the knight from coming to c6 and the knight on c6 will put more pressure on a7, thus making black's position completely hopeless. And the format, once again, of this tournament is that chess is quite important. You either need to get 18 points in tennis, and since right now uh, we see that the score is 6-6. Six, six. Or not to lose in chess, either on time or by checkmate. Uh, checkmate. The time control is 15-0. So it's not possible to make a few more moves and to win some time. And we saw that Pavel was playing very fast because it was quite an easy game for him with a very clear plan and with Black uh, getting into a very difficult position straight out of the opening. Okay, so well, Black sacrificed a pawn, again trying to get something on the king side but it's just too difficult with just one queen taking part in the attack and white pieces are getting closer and closer to the black king now let's check king goes to a8 And the evaluation of plus 23 says it's all. Bishop takes b6. And that means that 
black is almost almost they're about to get checkmated because if the knight uh, takes if knight takes b6 and rook takes a7 will follow with a checkmate so it's not possible to capture back on b6 k1 more check queen to e3 check Basically, any move is possible, but Pavel decides to get to h2 in order to keep this pawn on g3 protected. Rook g8, final attempt to put pressure on g3, but rook f3, of course, uh, safely protecting the pawn on g3. And it's almost time to get back to tennis, to play another six points on the tennis court. That's exactly what players are to be doing. So six more points. The score was 6-6 six, six after the second tennis segment. But in the third tennis segment, Ricardo was able to lead in on the tennis court. And the score was 10-8, but unfortunately for Ricardo, the position on the chessboard is just too bad. It's just too bad. Black is about to get checkmated. Queen to e6, bishop takes a7, and having about 7 minutes on his clock, and Ricardo resigned. He just understood that the situation is hopeless because even if he just uh, keeps still, not move, not moving his pieces and uh, get to the tennis uh, part number four, six more points in tennis will not change the situation and he will still lose in uh, chess later on. Well, that was a great tournament for Pavel and of course I congratulate him uh, with this victory. Before I end up this uh, video, of course I want to share with you a few more uh, moments uh, from Baden-Baden. First let's uh, listen to the interviews of the winners and then uh, see the uh, prize giving ceremony and I do hope that you enjoyed this video and you're going to press like to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I'll see you real soon. Take care, play chess, play tennis, stay healthy and fit and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. So oh, congratulations. That lighting. Okay, congrats. Your impressions, please, for us. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice, as usual. A good time. Fun two days. Well, semi final match was, was, was not great. It was not probably a one up, and my backhand was, was just horrible. So at some point, I just decided to skip any forehand or have a slice. Or Try to play for it anyway, even from the left side. And chess wise, it was not great. I was not very proud of my game. Well, opening kind of quite well. But then it, somehow I blundered that at an ID4, you know, take on h5, knight f3 check. And uh, from that point on, I, I was not sure I was, I was better, maybe even worse, and maybe even bad at some point. But luckily, my, my opponent. 
a shot of time. I managed to, to win on time finally. Well, the final level was quite happy with it. Uh, well, I managed to resist in tennis. Very important. And the chess game went quite, quite, quite well from the opening. It's an advantage and uh, be careful. Up. Yeah, and uh, that's basically it. Chess was decisive. Congratulations, Ricardo. A few words from you. How was your tournament? I had ups and downs in the tournament. Yesterday in tennis, I lost one match I shouldn't have lost. I lost one match that the guy was much better than me that day. So I had five points. Could have had six, but five is okay. Normally. Having five points, my chance is good enough to qualify for the same side, and that's what I did today. No great games, but I managed to win twice, draw four times, and I only lost to you. That's also normal. <laughs> so I qualified for the semifinals again for the eighth year in a row, so that's pretty good. I played eight times, eight times in the semifinals. And today, the first semi-final, I played against the guy who beat me easily in tennis yesterday. And I had a very good tennis match with him. It was only 7-5 for him. It was very close. But I played a very good game. He didn't play a good opening and I won easy chance. So I went to the finals and the finals I played two very bad. Very bad in tennis. I barely managed to win 9-7. Would have been 8-8. Eight, eight. In the chess, I made an opening mistake and he was over very quickly, so he deserved. Congrats to him. Thank you, Roslav, first of all, for this great initiative. We've been playing here for how many? 11 years already. 11 years? Yeah, 11 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm here from the very first one. Thanks to all you guys for participating. Huh? For all those, thank you for those who. <laughs>